Hey guys, happy Tuesday. Hope you enjoyed your weekend, got after a awesome Monday, and are just crushing this month. I feel like May is going a little faster um, than the past months, so maybe that's a good thing here. Um, today we have our town hall meeting, so you guys can pop in to the Facebook Live meeting. Um, you can ask questions, interact it, um, an interactive meeting to just discuss what's going on um, and the hopeful future. So that will be at 115 on Facebook. Um, not a ton of updates, so it would be good to hop in, kind of clear up some of the things we've talked about and get us all on the same page for the steam ahead to June and a hopeful, hopeful opening. So things to do today. Make sure you're checking the interactive calendar as well. Um, if you haven't been starting the um, mental health podcast, I highly recommend checking it out. Um, it's un -F your brain. Um, it's a great podcast, just 20 minutes, sometimes even less than that. Um, I listen to it while I'm on a walk and just kind of helps you work out your muscles for your brain, so your mindset muscles. Um, going along with that mindset muscles, we're going to start with our topic Tuesday today. So today's question is, um, what's something you're grateful for? For this week during our uh, May the Force Be With You challenge, we're asking the members that are taking part in that to write down three things they're grateful for each day. Um, and ideally to change up what those three things are um, each day. So writing something different. Um, every time if you can. This can be something really simple um, and then it translates to some positive pathways for your brain. So I can use an example for myself as I did this for a whole month um, trying to come up with different things. Sometimes it was as simple as I'm thankful for coffee in the morning um, and sometimes it was you know I'm thankful for the act of X, Y, or Z, um, maybe for my staff, that was often something um, during the month of November as we got towards the holidays. Um, thankful for all the extra hands, always, things like that. Um, but one thing I remember is after doing it so often is just like that natural tendency to come back to it when you're having really negative thoughts for no reason. Um, even as simple as like waking up in the winter and, you know, I remember getting up to go to a 5 a.m. class and thinking, oh, I don't want to wake up right now. And I was like, well, I'm thankful that I had a bed to sleep in and a warm um, apartment to be in tonight or last night. So it wasn't, you know, it doesn't change the situation. Like I still had the negative thought about having to go to work, but then I just kind of countered it with, yeah, that was the case. Um, that I still have to wake up, but I'm really glad that I got to sleep in a bed last night. So just like reframing some of our negative thoughts with some positive ones, it doesn't always happen naturally. And um, actually, if you listen to the mental health episode number two, it talks about some neutral mindset um, or how to shift from a really negative thought to just a slightly more positive one. Um, it can still be a negative thought or a neutral thought, but the idea is that you're not going from something like oh, I have to wake up and go to work today to, I absolutely love my job because it's not always the case, right? So you don't have to come up with a lie necessarily, but maybe something that's more neutral, like I, I got to sleep in my bed last night. Um, something that's not necessarily positive or negative, it's just you know a, a fact. Um, I got to sleep in my bed um, and thinking about the fact that like many people don't get to sleep in their bed at night. So again, listen to those mental health talks. And if you at all want to exercise those muscles, those um, mindset muscles, uh, just like we focus on our physical health so often, we want to make sure we're thinking about our mental health. And not only during a pandemic, always we want to be focusing on what gets us to the healthiest, happiest life. And it's often not just our physical body. Um, people can be completely physically fit and not be happy. Um, and that's just training your brain. So going with that, read today's post. Um, Jenna wrote off, us an awesome post on mindset muscles. So we will send that out to you guys in your email as well. Check it out. Um, and yeah, have some fun learning about your brain and how you can rewire those thoughts and emotions. For our warm-up today, 
We're going to get after 10 minute AMRAP, just get that body good and warm. And then we've got a nice little upper body pump to follow um, a little bit of a, a harder, I would say a core focused workout without it being core focused. So meaning that all those movements are really driven from our core to extremity, we're activating that core, activating that backside and challenging ourselves to stay moving for a nice little burner. Um, was an interesting rep scheme as well, just a little bit different for you guys today. That workout's called Sizzler. So just getting warmed up, we're gonna do some different movements. Uh, we'll go 10 minutes in total. So that first one being a sprawl. What that sprawl is, is basically just a burpee where you go to a plank instead of to the ground. So you're gonna plank jack out, pop up, jump. So you do jump, but you don't jump with your hands overhead and keep them down like a gorilla. Jack it out, pop it up, five of those. After five there, we've got 10. We're gonna go two shoulder tap, two toe tap. So right, left, right, left. 10 of these, it'll go right, left, right, left. That's one, two, three, and so on. So going through a full set of those for 10, we have our five push-up to down dog. Again, those can be knee push-ups. If you got after that look mono no hands workout, you're loving your push-up muscles right now for all those hand release push-ups. Then we have our 10 good mornings. So we did some of those in our warm-up yesterday. Knocking that butt against a glass on the counter, in my case. Going for 10 there. Just going over those hamstrings well out. Then we have five inchworms. This is really gonna get those hamstrings soft bend in the knee. Hands locking out, nice and controlled through the core to that plank position. And then you're just pushing the floor away as you walk yourself back to your knees there. Going for five. If you want, you can do that with a wide stance, get a little bit different um, hamstring stretch there. And then we have 10 lunge and reach. So You'll step back into that reverse one, reach and open up that chest, that core. Going through those 10 there. Awesome. Once we're through our warm up, we have four rounds of bent over rows with a supinated grip. So, what that means is a reverse grip here. We're going to bent over row. Um, if you have two dumbbells, you can do two if you have one lighter dumbbell, you'll do all on one side and then all on the other. And if you have one heavier dumbbell that you want to hold in the middle and do both arms on that, you can do that. So dumbbell, kettlebell, whatever you have, um, I will show this movement. So whether you have one or two, you can get set, chest stays up as an angle, but those hips go back, knees down, think about it. Like this, if we were going to you know, pick up like something like a deadlift, you be in that good position, keeping those arms nice and close. Send those elbows back and lower. So the difference here is that our palms are going to face away. And we're going to pull back and lower. So again, if I have two objects, pull back and lower. One big thing is we want to make sure we pull that chest through and pull those shoulder blades back. Right, I'm not starting from this position. Notice the difference there and here. I'm gonna think about engaging that back, pulling all those muscles nice and tight. If you're trying to pinch them down and back. Um, if you have one object, you're gonna go ahead and get set just like you would with both arms. Pull that chest nice and proud. Keep that elbow close to the body and pull back. From the front, it looks like this. You're just going to about the bottom of your rib cage there. 
and then you can switch arms again get you set get those shoulders squared up with the ground even though it's only one arm working right i'm not like relaxing like this keep those shoulders square awesome and then if you have two items again you'll do those at the same time you'll go eight to ten reps in total holding on to both it can be a barbell as well um, so one item that's across both hands or two and both at the same time. You also have the object or option of one dumbbell. So if you can hold it in that curl position and pull back, it's a little bit more challenging to get that supinated grip and that's okay. Um, we'd rather you have a proper distance so that you can activate the right muscles. If you're super close, you're just gonna be like pulling to, um, it's like a forearm workout more than it is getting those lats and back engaged with the biceps. So again, if you have one object, you hold on both sides and row a little bit more in that frame. So that is going to be our um, bent over row with that supinated grip. Then we have our floor press. Again, this is gonna be the same idea. So if you have two objects, you can do both. Um, you can do eight to 10 reps with both arms. If you have um, one medium weight object, you'll do eight on the right, eight on the left. And if you have a heavier object, you'll go one object across both arms at the same time. Floor press, you're gonna get that little back tucked into the ground, head on the ground, activate that core, come up. You wanna be at about 45 degree, maybe a little bit more than that, but we don't wanna be all the way at 90, down ever so slightly. Uh, you're gonna start with that dumbbell at about the bottom of the rib cage, and then press up to eye height and lower. Working through again, you can do eight. If you have a single dumbbell like me, and this is a 20 pounder, um, you can do eight on the right, eight on the left. If you have two 20s and you can manage going through, you know, the eight on both at the same time, do that. And then say this was like a 45 and too heavy for me to do on a single arm, and hold both arms on it and do eight to 10 reps this way with the floor press. Big thing here, engage that core, press up, finish with those arms locked out. And when you lower, make sure that those elbows aren't out at 90 degree angles. This will hurt. This will be nice and engaging of the lats and the pec at the same time. So that is that. And then the last thing we have is for that pre wall is gonna be eight on the right, and then eight on the left, or eight to 10, I should say. Half kneeling Arnold. So what they sound like, right? Half kneel, making 90 degree angles, getting that chest nice and active. You're gonna lift that dumbbell into the front rack position, and then you're gonna Arnold press, well, um, you're gonna press up overhead, and then come down into that uh, Arnold press. So you'll be here, and then press up. Sorry, ignore that first rep that I did. I was starting in this position. I'm gonna start so that our knuckles are facing the front wall, and we'll twist so that our palm is facing the front wall, and then lower. So I can show that again here, starting with that front, twist, and lower. Eight reps on the right, eight to 10. And then, so you're kind of starting like a bicep curl, right? Starting here. Press up until that palm is showing at the top. Lower. Eight to 10 reps of that. That's the right and left side getting done. Everything will go through four rounds of all of that. Then we'll hit our workout for today. So our wad today is Sizzler. Sizzler is gonna be sumo de la tackle, right side V-ups, left side V-ups, and then Snuggies. I will teach you what a Snuggie is. Um, it's just a fun way of saying a hang snatch to a reverse lunge. Um, and then I'll show you the options for that. But that sumo double high pull is what we'll start with. So whether you have a kettlebell or a dumbbell, nice wide stance here, not a regular deadlift stance, a little bit wider, send those toes out ever so slightly, knees out, and then those hips can sit back as we reach down explodes so that that's just nice and active at the top, not hyper sending through, just squeeze to stand. So getting warmed up, we'll just get five deadlifts here. Chest stays up, right? 
not dropping and rounding. So then the bad rep would look like this. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna keep that chest up, send those hips back. Drop to the floor. After five of those reps, you can do that with a dumbbell as well. Dumbbell head should be up. I shouldn't say should be. It can also be sideways like this if you choose to, but I go about to the mid shin then. You probably don't want to go all the way to the ground with that. So after that, we're going to add that zip. So it's going to look like this, two inch dip and drive, or you can go this way, two inch dip and drive. You have the kettlebell, two inch dip, zip. Let's go through five reps there. And then we'll piece that together. So see my deadlift position, keep it nice and close, zip it all the way up and return it back to the hip and then down. We'll go through 22 reps there for our first round. After you get through those, um, we have our single leg via. You're gonna do all on the right side and then all on the left. So all 22 reps, right side, all 22 reps, left side. That V up, arms are gonna go back, chin's gonna tuck, the legs gonna come up and we're gonna tap the toe of the toe. Looks like that. Right, so I'm bending my body in half, using that core. Make sure that chin is tucked to help roll that body up. If that is too challenging, you have two different options. One, you can lay on the ground and just work on single leg lifts. That's gonna be a little bit easier, but it's still gonna activate the core. Um, a little bit easier than this other option. Your other option is gonna be arms staying straight back. Same as that snap up, but this time instead of snapping up and touching your toe, you should come to a tucked position at the knee. So those are your options. Either that single leg straight up, you can go this way, this is a little more challenging, or that most scaled option, just lifting that leg up. Then you do the same thing on the other side. So 22 right, 22 left. That last move we have is gonna be our hang snatch into a reverse overhead lunge. Let's see if I can get a good angle here for you guys to watch this one. So hang snatch means it's coming from the hip position. So you're gonna deadlift it up. This is where it's gonna start. You're gonna dip, drive, elbow, punch up overhead, stand. That's your hang snatch. Then you're gonna reverse lunge and stand. That's one rep. Then you're gonna come to the hang, snatch it up, Step back, that's two. We're gonna go through 22 total reps here for that alternating, for that snuggy. This should be alternating here, 22 total. If you have um, limited range of motion so you can't go overhead with that um, position, or sorry, with that reverse lunge, we can do a hang clean into a reverse lunge in the front rack position. And then you can do this with a kettlebell. Um, so you can hang, snatch that kettlebell up. And then reverse lunge. But if that's too challenging and you wanna do a kettlebell swing instead, you can go single arm to eye height. Relax it to the side, reverse lunge, switch sides. So that is an option as well. The kettlebell can be awkward. Um, so if you don't want to snatch it in an overhead squat, you can also opt for that clean and reverse lunge. So main thing you want to make sure you do on these snuggies is that one rep is snatch, reverse lunge from that hang position. Um, and then each rep counts as its own. So right arm is one, left arm is two, right? Um, make sure you're not counting, doing all 22 on the right side and then all 22 on the left. It should be 22 total alternating. Then you'll go into your round of 18, doing 18 of all those movements. So starting with that sumo to lift high pull, right leg V up, left leg V up, then the snuggies, 12 and six. If you have any questions, you can definitely shoot us um, a message and let us know. Make sure you do so well before your workout so we have time to respond. Um, but we want to make sure we're helping you guys out if you have any questions or need to change it up. Otherwise, come to the five 
noon or 5 p.m. class. The coaches love coaching you guys. We love being able to interact. So, stop on in.